Good morning, and we welcome you to Parkside Baptist Church. Please stand if you would, and we'll sing together. Turn in your songbook, if you would, to page number 57, page 57, as we sing at Calvary. We'll sing the first and the last of verse, page number 57. you're here this morning how many of you had a bad storm last night at your place bad storm yeah we we live in a metal building it's a barn and my when that when that rain starts hitting real hard i'll tell you what if you're not careful it'll rock you to sleep and uh just uh but but really bad storm out where we live and so i i saw that a lot of other people had that rain and some even had hail but uh, aren't you glad that you're in church today? We have a solid roof. And by the way, uh, we have the world above us. And so uh, I, I'm wondering how our special speakers are going to do. I wonder if they're going to get nervous and think, man, the world's going to fall on me. But uh, ushers, come if you will. I'm so glad you're here. If you are visiting today for the first time, first time in a long time, again, thank you so much for visiting Parkside Baptist Church. We're going to ask all of our guests to please be seated. If you'll be kind enough just to be seated as a guest, we're not going to embarrass you or anything. We're just going to give you a card to fill out. It's called a visitor's card, and you can place that in the offering plate as it goes by. That would be wonderful. We appreciate you being here so very much. Father, we love you. We thank you for church. I pray for the young men as they come to sing. I pray that you'll use them uh, to begin to prepare our hearts for that which is the messages to come. And Lord, we thank you for that. Then, Father, I pray that you'll be with each and every other service, uh, 13 this morning, that we're having on property at this time. I pray that you'll be with each speaker. I pray that you'll use them as they speak, preach, teach the Word of God. And, Father, we we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, please. For now the sun's still rising, there's work to still be done, while we're waiting for the promise of what is yet to come. Finish well, every day that we are given, finish well, for the glory of His name. Church, arise and lift the banner of the 
was very, very good. I appreciate young men singing and young ladies too and uh, using their talents at a young age. What a wonderful blessing. We have a missions conference coming up. We want you to come to the missions conference. Of course, it's going to begin this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. It'll go Thursday and Friday at 7 o'clock. Then Sunday, of course, it'll be our normal services, morning and evening. We have two speakers. Of course, Dr. Todd Lassner will be with us. He is the pastor of the Trinity Baptist Church, Arlington, Texas. Also, former pastor there, Pastor Emeritus, and that is, of course, Dr. Bob Smith. We've had both of these gentlemen have preached for us before on different occasions. It might be a, a college graduation or it might be inner college or here in our church or at Baptist Leadership Conference. And so, but they'll be our keynote speakers. We want you to come if you can and uh, try and bring somebody with you. There's nothing like a missions conference to get our hearts in tune with the very heart of God. And so please be mindful about that. There's some special emphasis that we do have, of course, on Sunday, that Sunday, next Sunday, February the 18th, we're going to have a couple of things we're emphasizing, of course, if you would like to dress up, especially in the evening service, we're going to have a little bit of dress competition for those that would like to participate in the dress competition. It'll be sixth grade and below, seventh grade through twelfth grade, singles and then married couples, and you can participate in that. We'll give a, a gift away to the person that dresses with the most missionary emphasis and so please be mindful about that try to participate in that if you can and then we have a, a special what we call an international supper now that'd be next sunday night after the evening service and you will enjoy it uh, there's going to be bountiful uh, amounts of food for everyone to be able to go around and be able to enjoy the different countries represented there and uh, you don't want to miss it it's always a delightful evening and can I tell you the tables that will be representing the various countries it, you the food if you close your eyes if you close your eyes and you eat that food it's going to taste exactly like from that country and you know if you can't get in the mood of that just ask them to sing to you in that country's tongue and uh, make, make it go down a little bit faster and more enjoyable we do have a shopping spree for missionaries if you like to be a part of that we try to spoil our missionaries that come we try and get them uh, of course the men a suit a ladies a nice uh, outfit and so if you like to participate in that you can do it on the envelope by missionary shop spree or you can go online do the drop down you'll see it there in the menu or you can text to give simply the word shopping and that would be great just to give you an idea of course the Lord has blessed our church with what we call and rightfully so faith promise giving uh, if a hundred people uh, were to give fifty dollars a week just think about this a hundred people giving fifty dollars a week uh, that's, uh, that's like eating at Chick-fil-A, say, $7 a day at Chick-fil-A a lunch. Now, uh, prices has gone up at Chick-fil-A, and so that means you would probably get uh, French fries and a Coke, okay? Uh, but that would equal $5,000. That would hit our goal. $5,000 a week is our goal to be able to give to Faith Promise 
giving. Or maybe in our church, uh, 119 people give $42 a week. Uh, that is $6 for going down to Starbucks every day and getting a Starbucks coffee or some other type of fancy coffee shop. Uh, and then we would hit $4,998. And of course, that would also hit the goal that we have for this year's goal. Or if 357 of our members uh, decided they were going to give $14 a week, that's only $2 a day for a soft drink. And again, we would hit that goal of, of $4,998. And so it, it's, it's a great, great challenge to be able to do. We hope that you avail yourself to be a part of it. Everybody can give. Everybody can pray. It is a special time because what we're doing is we're partnering. You'll hear more about this in the message with a mission to be able to get the gospel out in those regions of the world. And so we thank the Lord for that opportunity. But we also do uh, soul winning here, uh, missionary outreach at home, if you will, in our Wednesday and Friday Bible clubs this week. We had 92 in attendance. Uh, there was eight visitors and four saved. We thank the Lord for that. Uh, last week, a record high in our church plant in South Dallas, 97 in attendance. Many people walk in the aisle receiving Christ, and we thank the Lord for that outreach ministry. Then our C Bible Clubs yesterday had 114 in attendance, six visitors, and uh, uh, one person receiving Christ. Ladies Foster Club went out. That's a soul winning uh, uh, outreach. Had six people saved yesterday. Thank the Lord for that. And then of course just uh, some outstanding events when it came to soul winning. And so we thank the Lord for a church that cares so very much. If you've not yet received a faith promise giving card we're going to give this to you we're not asking that you give anything to it today you pray about what your partnership will be with the lord and underwriting missionaries around the world that is getting out the gospel so if you've not yet received one of these we'd like to give you one this morning and you can pray about what to do uh, when it comes to faith promise giving and supporting missionaries and uh, we now have of course uh, over right at 90 I think it's 89 missionaries that we have and missionary projects that we support raise your hand if you need one of these and ushers are going to come and they'll give you one of those and you can pray about what to do and uh, of course we'll collect those uh, on Friday we'll also collect those next Sunday and so please be mindful about that if you will and uh, you take it home look it over pray uh, we'd ask you to do this a lot of our Sunday school classes if you are in a Sunday school class they're setting personal Sunday school class goals and so you'll notice on there we're not asking for your name uh, that's between you and the Lord what you give to faith promise giving however we are asking that you write down the class and the teacher's name if you do attend the Sunday school class and that way we can know if those individual Sunday school classes has hit their projected goals and that would be tremendous help to us if you brought a guest this morning you'd like to introduce your guest would you stand please you brought a guest this morning you'd like to be able to introduce your guest i see several visiting folks in the balcony here on the ground floor as well thank you so much for coming we're so honored that you're here yes right here nice and loud Okay, all right, very good. Brought some friends today, and, and they're, they're raising the hand and then ducking down, and that's good. I'm glad you got friends and you brought them. I'm looking for someone else, okay? All right, I see somebody pointing. Oh, right there. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, you are standing up. Okay, go ahead. Uh, in the second row by Sarah is Veronica. She used to ride the buses, and we met her Tuesday night, and she came back. And then over by Miss Sheila is Queen. She rode the bus with her um, relatives on the Okay, that's good, Penny. I can pick on Penny. She's always picking on me. She, it used to be her and Melissa Lofton, some other ones. They would get around the corner. When I'd walk around the corner, they'd jump out and go, boo! You know, I'd say, what are you trying to do? Give me a heart attack? They said, yes. And so, uh, it, it, you know, but I, I appreciate them so much. Well, let's give all of our guests a big round of applause. Turn your songbook to page number 178. You may remain seated as we sing Footprints of Jesus. Page number 178 in your songbook. Sing in the first and the last verse.
Would you stand with us once again as we sing and turn in your songbook to page number 264, page 264. As we sing, he is able to deliver thee. We'll sing all the verses this morning. time of course we receive our tithes and offerings let's be faithful to support the house of God all that goes on through our ministries here brother Dalton's going to come he's going to lead us in prayer I appreciate brother Dalton helps out in our youth department of course outstanding police officer here in Dallas does a great job in protecting our community we love him and appreciate him so very very much also works on the bus ministry and so does a great job working in our bus ministry let's go ahead and pray together please let's pray Generally, Father, Lord, thank you, God, for uh, bringing us here for another day of uh, worship uh, of your name, Lord, and uh, God, just be with the sermon and uh, the offering, Lord, and uh, God, if there's anyone who doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, uh, please uh, make sure they get that right before they leave here today. In Jesus' name, amen.
wonderful job. Don't forget, we have our 4.30 practice for our orchestra on Sunday afternoons. And then at 5 o'clock, many different uh, things all across the campus for every age group. And so we'd encourage you to bring uh, your young people for Bible Blazers, 1st through 6th grade. They meet in the gymnasium. 7th through 12th grade, Young Fundamentalist, next building over upstairs at 5 o'clock. And then uh, here in the auditorium, our choir practices. And then we have our adult discipleship program. And that meets on the main level downstairs, uh, next building over. They'll direct you from there. Tuesday, one of our adult soul uh, meetings take place. That's at 7 o'clock. Meet back here in the Senior Saints room. And then they'll go out in the community and uh, share the gospel around the area. Wednesday at 6 o'clock, our Care After Loss ministry meets before the service. And so if you know someone that's recently lost a loved one or you have lost a loved one and want to learn the biblical principles about grieving and how to comfort one another, we'd encourage you to come for that. That also meets back here behind the auditorium in the Senior Saints classroom at 6. And then at 7 o'clock, our regular uh, normal Wednesday service, but this week will be the beginning of our missions conference. And so please make plans to attend Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, all at 7 o'clock, and then our normal regular uh, schedule on Sunday as well as a part of our missions conference. So please put that on your calendar. Also on Thursday and Friday, our academy students will start at 9 o'clock instead of the normal 8 o'clock hour. So if you have kids in the academy, that's Thursday and Friday only, but a one-hour late start time there uh, for them. Uh, Lone Star Baptist College will be having a missionary in chapel on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And so you're encouraged and invited to come and attend those special meetings. Again, just uh, sign in down here, and then we meet upstairs next building over uh, for chapel. That's at 11 o'clock each of those days for our special missions emphasis time. And then next Sunday, or I'm sorry, the last Sunday night of the month, uh, February the 25th, after the evening service, there'll be a bus banquet. Those are for all the bus workers. If you're a bus driver, a bus captain, a bus secretary, you help in the bus ministry in some facet. There'll be a special banquet for you after the evening service. That is Sunday, February the 25th. Sing one more song. You may remain seated. Turn to page 309. 309. We'll sing Our Great Savior, singing the first verse only. singing this morning. Take your Bible, please go to uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Some of you know this one quite well. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Of course, our missions conference coming up, I try uh, to set our hearts for that which is missions conference. And so this morning, I'll be speaking on this subject matter, uh, what we know about missions, what we know about missions. Now, there's several ways to view missions. Uh, you can view it from a personal standpoint. Uh, you can view it from a church standpoint. You can view it from the mission field standpoint. We're going to look at it from the church standpoint collectively as a body this morning that I think can be a help to us. We're in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. May we stand together, please, if you will, for the reading of God's Word. The Bible says this, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Father, we love you. We thank you for church. What a wonderful blessing it is to be able to come 
be able to open a Bible, be able to learn. I pray for the many other services we have on property today, all the junior church services and the Spanish church and the special needs department, so many departments meeting this morning for church. God, I pray that you'll be with each speaker. I pray that you'll use them as they teach, preach the word of God. And Father, may you gather with us here today and also speak to our hearts here in the auditorium. And Lord, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, please. Shall I take from your hand your blessings, yet not welcome any pain? Shall I thank you for days of sunshine, yet grumble in days of rain? Shall I love you in times of plenty? appreciate that. Of course, that's brother-in-law and sister-in-law right there. What a blessing that is. We're in the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. I want to speak this morning, as I said a moment ago, on what we know about missions. You know, to some churches, to some people around the country, missions is something that is not typically talked about. You have different types of churches around the country. You have what you call a soul-winning church, and they focus on that which is the community, their surroundings, if you will. They run buses, and they're good churches, and uh, they emphasize that which is local church ministries and trying to reach the lost people that's in the surrounding communities. That's a blessing that always should be done. You have some churches that focus on missions. They don't focus on reaching the community. Uh, you know, they don't necessarily pass out tracts. They don't go talk to anybody about Christ. 
uh, in their community. Now, these are also good churches. Uh, they believe in missions. They support missionaries around the world. I think it's best, I think it's best, for a church to have both emphases. I think it's best if we emphasize the need to be able to get out the gospel to those that's around the areas. Our city, another city, as far as we can possibly reach, get out the gospel. I think that's important, but I also think it's important to be a gospel sending church. Now, what does that mean? That means that we send missionaries to go to places that we physically ourselves cannot go to. Let me get these five gentlemen right here. One, two, three, four, and five. Come right up here and help me, if you will. And so let's say, come on up here, fellas, if you will, and kind of spread out a little bit. Do you mind spreading out some over here and, and some over here? And boy, they look sharp, don't they? We thank God for them. And so, but let's say, let's say, well, let's say over here that uh, you're going to go to, now remember where you're going. You ready? You're going to go to South America. Where are you going? South America. You're going to go to South Africa. Where are you going? South Africa. South Africa. Oh, we're going to put you in Russia. Okay, where are you going to go? Russia. Uh, Russia. Okay, how about if we put you in India? You're going to go where? India. Can you remember that? India. India. Okay, and then we're going to, how about China? We're going to put you in China. Okay, so here's what we have. We have the Great Commission that's given to local churches. We understand that God says here in the book of Acts chapter 1 in verse 8, let me read it to you to emphasize how God is doing this. He says, the Bible says, but ye sh shall, listen to it now, receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Then he says both. Now that means at the same time. He says both in Jerusalem, it says in all Judea and in Samaria, how are you going to do both? How are you going to do all that? The Bible says, unto the uttermost part of the earth. And so this is where what we call missions comes into play. There's no way, even if I was a highly energetic individual, there's no way that I'm going to be able to, to fly over, if you would please, and be able to get over there to that which is uh, South America or, or South Africa. Or, or I'm not going to be able to go to... Russia or India or where right. I'm not going to be able to I mean you know and so what happens is this God gives a plan God says here's what I want you to do as a local church he's talking to a local church here he says what I want you to do as a local church I want you to be able to reach all these countries at the same time so God says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call missionaries. I'm going to call those that are representatives of the gospel. I'm going to call those that are uh, soul winners. And I'm going to send them out. I'm going to launch them into these different countries. I'm going to launch them. I'm going to put them in these perspective places that I have called them to be a missionary to. Now, the only problem is, let's say if he goes to South America, uh, he cannot work in that country because he'll be deported. They don't want him coming in. America is one of the few countries that uh, a foreign agency can come into the country and take of the American jobs and, and not get booted out of the country, okay? Most countries around the world, you can't do that unless you come in underneath an educational type of visa or something like that to be able to receive a job with their blessing, okay? With the government's blessing. So let's say that he's gonna go to South America. Well, he's gotta eat. You know, he's got a wife, he's got nine children, and, and so uh, he's going he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna to have to eat, all right? And, and so, so what happens is this. Uh, the Bible way is that local churches that believe in the gospel, local churches that want the world to be able to receive the gospel, they partner together to be able to get behind this man, his wife, and his children to be able to send them to that country so that now that country can have the gospel by the way uh, god wants everybody to have the gospel he says to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature all right so we have a mandate as every local church does we have a mandate from god to be able to reach the world with the gospel now we can't do it by ourselves. 
We just can't do it. I, I thank the Lord that we have missionary teams that go out from our church, and if you ever want to become a part of a missionary team, to be able to go to a country, to be able to give the gospel, it's wide open to you being a church member, okay? But we still can't reach all the world with just sending out missionary teams. We can't do it. I do uh, sometimes uh, large evangelistic crusades, and, or I'll go and I'll train soul winners along with different ones that would come on my team, and, and we go to different countries, and we do that. But we can't do it everywhere at the same time. So God's plan is that God is going to call, he's going to put uh, a, an irreversible call, a, a call, if you would please, that is impressions upon a person's heart that is undeniable, a call that they cannot escape, a call that they cannot get away from, a call that they cannot run from, uh, something that God places in their heart about the people of that land that they're supposed to go and to reach with the gospel. All right? And then God tells the local church, our local church, that we have a God-given responsibility to take on those people, to partner with God and helping these people to be able to go to that field. Now, you can be excited about giving the gospel as much as you want to, but again, emphasizing, I'm not going to be able to go to all these countries. There's just no way. So what we do as a church is we pray and we say, dear Lord, show us who we can help that is going to get the job done. We don't want to support somebody to just go on vacation. We don't want to do that. We don't want to put our hard-earned money sacrificially giving uh, into a person that is simply going to go and we never hear anything from them. We want them to be able to report back to let us know how it's going so we can pray for them, encourage them, stand behind them, support them, and help them. All right, thank you. Be seated, if you will. And so we see that God has a plan. God's plan is fulfilled through the local church. So why is it so imperatively important that you do your part uh, to be able to pray as to what God would have you to give to be able to help sponsor a missionary, to be able to fulfill the will of God in their life and the will of God in that country's life so that they also can hear the gospel. Here's what we see in our Bible. The Bible says here in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11 and verse 6, the Bible says, without faith it is impossible to please him. So whatever you do in supporting missionaries to go to the foreign field, it also involves the element of faith. The Bible says in verse 1 of that same chapter, it says faith is the subject substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We understand this, that there's two things involving missions and a missionary. Somebody said that every heart that is without Jesus is a mission field. Every heart that has Christ is a missionary. All right. Someone said this, that it's not right for those to hear the gospel twice before some has not even heard the gospel once. And so it's important for people to understand God has given that which is what we call the Great Commission to that which is local churches, where he says to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Ghost. Uh, tonight we're going to vote. We have to replace our baptistry that is in great disrepair. And so we have to vote on that tonight. Brother Bachman called the baptistry place, and, and it's owned by a Baptist. And, uh, and he said this. He said, uh, okay, so you want to uh, buy a baptistry, and it's the best deal that we could find anywhere in the nation. And he did great on his research. And so, so uh, he, we said yes. And he said, well, you know, how, how often do you fill the baptistry? And Dr. Bachman said, well, we leave it filled. You do what? Why do you leave it filled? He said, because we baptize almost every Sunday. And sometimes on a Sunday night and sometimes on a Wednesday night. And he said, let me get this straight. He said, you leave your baptistry filled because you baptize that often? What well, can I tell you? That ought to be the norm in every Baptist church found under heaven. 
because a part of the Great Commission is we go out, we tell people about Jesus Christ, people get saved, people that get saved are supposed to be commanded by God to be baptized, and then they begin to grow. So we understand our responsibility here, but our responsibility does not stop here. Our responsibility is to the ends of the world. So let me tell you what uh, that was his missions, talking about what missions is about. Let me tell you what missions is not. Statement number one, uh, what it is not. Uh, we're talking about missions now. Let me tell you what it is not. It, it is not somebody coming to your house and collecting money. It is not somebody, if you would please, sending you a bill. It is not somebody, if you would, uh, trying to coerce you to do something that you do not uh, feel led of the Holy Ghost, uh, led of the Holy Spirit to be able uh, to obey. It, it is that which is a commitment between you and God. Now, by the way, you ought to have that commitment between you and God. Why? Because there's a world that's dying without the gospel. I'll submit to you this morning that every boy and every girl that lives on the planet of earth deserves to hear the gospel. I'll submit to you this morning that every teenager, it does not matter what country they're birthed into. It doesn't matter what country they live in. It does not matter if they come from an affluent country or a country that is object poverty, third world type living. It doesn't matter their status in society, nor does it matter their educational level. Can I tell you this? Everybody deserves to hear the gospel. It does not matter what language they speak or how they articulate that particular language. It does not matter. Everybody deserves to be able to hear the gospel. It does not matter what religious persuasion they grew up under, whether it was a religious persuasion that taught them that good works would take them to heaven or that they believed you need to be baptized in order to go to heaven. It doesn't matter what type of religious persuasion they grew up under. Can I tell you, everybody deserves to hear that which is the truth of the living God, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what is missions not? Well, it's not a collection agency. It is a commitment that you make between God and you, and it's funneled through the local church to be able to support missionaries that's going to go and show people their need of Christ around the world. It does not replace your tithe. The tithe, of course, is commanded to be given to the local church. An offering for missions is above that. So we understand what it is not. Statement number two, what it is. It's a commitment between you and God. Right. We are taking the gospel seriously. We are saying that this is of the utmost importance. We're saying that people deserve the right to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're saying I'm not going to be selfish. We're saying I'm going to give God my very best in helping somebody to go because I myself cannot go. So the Bible talks about you and I using those that are in the church of Corinth as an example. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 12, the Bible says, for if there be first a willing mind. So there's got to be a willing mind. It says to accept, it says, according to that which man hath and not according to that which uh, listen to it now, he hath not. God said, I'm not expecting you to do what you cannot do. He said, I'm expecting you to do what I have given you to be able to do. So now we deal with what? We deal with what we call priorities. Priorities. Yeah. You know, years ago, oh, it's been now 40 years ago. 40 years ago, I became allergic to refined white sugar. You know what I did? I took that off of my priority list. And I don't use it anymore. Now, I haven't used it for a long, long, long time. And by the way, I'm used to not using it. 
Somebody comes up and they flash a candy bar in front of my nose with melted chocolate. It does not make my brain go into outer space. I have no desire for it. Somebody comes by and they say, oh, you need to have this piece of pie and it's got loads of white sugar on it. I will simply say, no, thank you. Why? I know the after effect. I know that it'll probably put me near a hospital or near a cemetery. So I'm not going to get involved in that. Now, can I tell you this? Can I tell you that we have to make choices as to what we do prioritizing our funds for the sake of the gospel? The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 18, the Bible says, uh, it says, but I have all and abound. It says, and I'm full. Having received, it says, of Ephraimitis, the Bible says, the things, it says, were sent to, uh, from you. He said, here's a church, a church at Philippi. Very, by, by the way, a church at Philippi, very small church. Very, very small church. And yet the Bible says that here they did this. They sent things through Ephraimitis uh, that was a, a sweet smell. It was a sacrifice. It was acceptable, and it was well-pleasing to God. What did they do? They allowed God to use them to provide that which was well-pleasing to him, and it was a sacrificial type of offering. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and in verse 10, the Bible says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus on two good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So God says it's good that we do good works. It's just a good thing to do. Yesterday, I was out door knocking and talking to people about Jesus Christ here uh, in the community, and I, I knocked on the door, and this, this, uh, this sharp-looking young man came to the door, and I started to give him the gospel, and, and uh, he was so intense. He was listening. He was just like on the, on, on the very edge. He was just laughing up every word I said. He was just so excited about hearing the gospel. I did not know that his mother was around the corner, had the door slightly open, and, and, and she, she walked out and she said, she said with tears in her eyes, she said, she said I, I've been praying for this. Amen. I, I've really been praying for this. Amen. She said, this is so good. He needs to hear this. And she looked at her son and said, now you pay attention. <laughs> and, uh, and then she said this. She said, I have another son, and he's here. And she's asking me, can he listen too? I said, no, no, no. No, I said, yeah, yeah, that's okay. And so she brought the other son out. The other son stood there. And I, I went through the simple plan of salvation, how that only Jesus Christ is the one that can save. And I, I went through the entire plan of salvation, showing them their need of Christ. And, and, and they both bowed their hearts and they received Christ as Savior. And then they reached over and they hugged each other. And I said, that is neat. I said, so the hug, to explain the hug. And they said, we're going to go to heaven together. Right. Well, you know, every country needs somebody that's going to knock on somebody's door. Right. Every country needs somebody that's going to go out to that village and uh, be able to tell somebody about Christ in the village out there. Every country needs that. Everybody needs somebody that's going to care and somebody that says, I will carry the gospel because I care. And so here's what we see. We are his workmanship. Now, let me show you the process of how it works. The Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 9, here, of course, there's a, a prophet. He's told to arise and go down to uh, Zillafat, and there you'll see that it's right beyond that which is uh, Zidon. The Bible says there's going to be a woman there, and she is going to sustain you. So here's the prophet, here's a, a man of God. He goes down to the city in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 10, and he sees this woman out there gathering sticks, and he called on to her, and he said, hey, look, he said, uh, uh, fetch me a little water and a vessel that I may drink, and so she did, and so, but she was already serving. She was already trying to meet the needs that she had in her life and in the life of her son. The Bible says in verse 13 that Elijah said on here, fear not, he said, go. And he says, uh, tells her what to do. And he says, to gather, it says, it says for me a, a cake first. And so he said, now, I, I want you to go and do this. And so she understood that. So she went and she brought it. 
But she said this. She said, you know, uh, I, I don't have too much for me, you know. But sh what she did is she did that which God had commanded her. And so God blessed them. Listen to what took place. The Bible says as she did that, that God sustained her. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 14, the Bible says that the barrel of the meal shall uh, not waste. And it says, and neither shall, it says, the cruise of oil fail. And then the Bible says that as she obeyed, what God spoke to her heart about. Now, you cannot leave God out of this. Listen to me, please. I love you, but please don't do this. Well, I'm just emotionally stirred. Well, you can get emotionally stirred about anything. Right. But that doesn't mean it's right. As we mature in the Lord, we learn not to make any decisions based on emotions. Because most of the time, our emotions will lead us the wrong way. God tells us not to trust our emotions. But you say, how do you know the difference? Because... The Holy Spirit will lead you only down the guidelines and not outside of that which is a scriptural direction. Here's what we found out so far. God's going to call missionaries. I was dating a girl before I, I met my dear wife in college. Her name was Julene Jones. And Julene came to me one day and she said, she said, Mike, she said, I, I really believe that God wants me to go to Germany. I said, well, that's good, Julene. I'm, I'm glad for you. But I'm not going to Germany. God, God's not called me to Germany. So I don't think we ought to continue dating. Because if you're going to Germany, and I'm not, it's not going to work. And if we get married, it's, it's hard to stay married when you're in Germany and I'm in America because I'm not going to Germany. God's not called me to Germany. So we broke up. She married some other guy and she went off to Germany. And guess what? I stayed in America. You say, why? Because it wasn't God's will that I would go to that country. Are you listening to me? But there is a will of God that does send people to that country. So what do I do? I say, okay, here's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to help them go. Why? Because they also need the gospel. Right. See, as we go soul winning here, as we tell people about Christ here, there's people everywhere else that also need the gospel. Right. So God says to that local church there in the book of Acts, he says this. He says, I want you to go to all these places at the same time. How do we do it? We do it the Bible way, God's pattern, through the local church. We have the illustration in 1 Kings chapter 17, where there's this uh, woman that uh, uh, obeys God, and God said, I'm going to take care of you, and uh, the meal wasted not, and the oil in the cruise, if you would please, it did not expire, it didn't fail, and God took care of them all the days of their life. Why? Not because that they were feeling led, but because they were led according to that which was God leading. So here's what we see. We see what missions is all about. We see, first off, it's not a collection agency. It's between you and God. We see what it is. It's done through the local church so that people around the world can hear the gospel. Then we see what, what we can do, if you would please. What, what, uh, what is it that we can do? What it would do for us? What will it do for us? There's something that God says that if you get involved in this, it's going to do something for you. Now, what is that? Well, let me give you a couple of statements, and I'm almost done. Statement number one, it helps to reach the world. It helps. We have missionary letters we read on Wednesday night. Brother Bell reads those for us, does a great job, called Missionary Spotlight. You get to hear about every missionary that we support, and you get to hear how God's using them on a foreign field. So it helps us to be able to help them. Another statement, it unifies us as a church. We're unified to reach the world with the gospel. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 15, the Bible says, and let us therefore as many be perfect. That means sound-minded or it means mature. He says, be thus minded, it says, that if anything be, it says, otherwise minded, God shall reveal it even this unto you. 
He said, you be minded about the things of God. He said, he'll make sure it's revealed onto you. So what does it do? It unifies us. We're of one accord. We want to see somebody receive Christ. Amen. We're of one accord. Okay? And then it promotes uh, stewardship in our life. Listen to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1. The Bible says, let every man, it says, so account, it says, of us, as it says, the ministers of Christ and the stewards of the mystery of God. So what happens is we become stewards together. And then what happens? We're talking about the local church responsibility. Then we become co-labors with those that go. Co-labors with those that go. So those that do go, we are working together with them. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 14, the Bible says, The love of God constraineth us because we thus judge. That if one died, it says, for all, then all were dead. But he that died, it says, for all they, it says, which live, shall not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him that died for them and rose again. So what does it do? It, it brings us together as co laborers right. What are we doing? We're not selling vacuum cleaners. Or the old Sears and Roebuck uh, catalogs that was out in the 1800s. We're, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. What are we doing? We have a greater cause, a greater responsibility. So when a missionary comes to our church, a lot of churches don't even have missionaries in, but when a missionary comes to our church, it, it's, a, it's a blessing to be able to be in the service and support them and to love them and to pray for them and to encourage them and say, man, you know, you can do a great job. I know I get to preach in many mission fields around the world. I've been doing it now for over 40 years. And can I tell you this? It's an amazing thing to be able to visit a missionary and watch everything that he or she is doing for God and then to be able to encourage them. I remember preaching a message. I was in uh, Negros, Occidon, and I was preaching a message at the missions conference, and there was, oh, I don't know, about 100 pastors that was there, about, uh, in addition, about 50 missionaries that was there, and so uh, we were meeting every night, and of course, the church was packed out with the church members and stuff, and I, and I was preaching. There was a missionary sitting there, and he was getting ready to quit. He's getting ready to throw in the towel, and I preached the message, and he came up to me crying afterwards. And he said, I decided that this week was going to be my last week. It was over. I'm done. I'm just tired of the drama. I'm tired of the junk. He said, I'm just, I can live life without all this. I'm just, I am done. And I preached a message that day. And he came up that afternoon. Boy, he's just bawling his eyes out. And he said, I was selfish, wasn't I? Because I was looking at me, 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 me. And it's not about me, 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 me. It's about him, 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 him. And can I tell you, we understand this. We understand that it, it is what a God can do for us. Then lastly, and I'm done. It, it is what God can do for others. You know, what happens? What happens when we get involved in missions? Well, it's an answer to prayer for somebody. Think about this. It says, therefore, it says, he said unto them, the harvest truly is great. The labors are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into his harvest. So it's an answer to prayer. You know, missionaries go from church to church. And this is what missionary uh, deputation is all about. They, they, they go about and they're hoping somebody would deputize them to be able to go out. And so they go from church to church to church. This is the life they live. Maybe for two years, trying to raise, you know, uh, $3,000 a month to live on or $4,000 a month to live on, depending on their field. And so they go from church to church to church to church, and, and they're trying to present, and you, you hear them. They would talk to their kids before they come in. They'll say, now, you behave. You behave. <laughs> don't, don't, don't mess this up. We need support. You behave. You know, and those kids are walking, you know, like they're robots or something. You know, you behave. You know, and because they're trying their very best to present themselves in such a way that somebody says, I think that's a good family. I think we ought to support them. You know, and, and so can I say this? That, that's what happens in churches. And, and, and these families, they try very, very hard to get the money they need. Why? Because God has called them. And here's what we see. The Bible talks about how these missionaries, they need to fulfill their calling. Why? Romans chapter 11 and verse 29. The, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Had a man come to me, he said, he said this one day. He said, here's what I'm going to do, preacher. I've got my plan. 
My plan is I'm going to work, 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 work. One day, one day, I'll be able to go, 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 go. But if God's called you to do something, he's called you to do it now, not later. You know? Uh, you know, when God calls a boy to preach at the age of 12, guess what? He's supposed to start preaching. God knew what age he called him. Oh, you say, well, you know, it, it might go to his head. He can preach on a bus route. He can preach in a park. He can preach on the corner. You know, God knows when he has called you to do something, and God is the one that makes the right decisions. Here's what we see. Romans chapter 10 and verse 14, the Bible says, how then can uh, they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how can they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how, how shall they hear without a preacher? So one preacher said this, every creature needs a preacher. And so how can they hear? And we have, we have families that's out of our church. You know, Josh and Natalie Aaron uh, in South uh, Africa. Uh, they, are, they are sent uh, out of our church. Uh, Denton and Hannah Bell, you know, full-time missionary evangelists sent out of our church. You know, John and, of course, uh, John Matthew and Heather Potherwathico, and all these have families, too. Well, they're sent, of course, to an unclosed country that I can tell you in private, but not over social media, because of their danger where they go. But can I tell you, they're sent out of our church. You know, St. John Hong and his dad, both sent out of our church, missionaries to Thailand. Now, can I tell you, these are people, if you would please, that have risen up and said, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. So some are called to go, and all of us are called to help go. Right. By the way, it would be a great thing for you one day to be able to say, well, I, maybe God's not called me to go full time, but I could take a mission trip. Right. You know, I've taken so many mission trips. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about bukus and bukus and bukus. I used to go to the mission field sometimes four times a year. I've taken bukus and missionary trips. And I remember one time I took a team of about 22 adults, and they went with me, and, and we're over, and I forget several countries we went to, and, and we're there, and, and uh, this young man, he came up to me, and he's bawling his eyes out, just bawling his eyes. They said, preacher, preacher, God got a hold of my heart, and oh, he said, I just need to go. And you know, God just kept that in there, and he went. And he has one of the greatest works that I know on the field but an American young man that God called. Can I tell you, it's amazing what God can do through somebody that says, I'm just yours. Right. I'm yours. I will do whatever you want me to do, whenever you want me to do it, wherever you want me to do it. I will give you my total life. Here I am. Whether it's going or getting on board and sending somebody else so they can give the gospel somewhere, somewhere. I'd go to the Philippines. Probably I've been in the Philippines more than any other country I've ever been to uh, in the world except living in America. And can I tell you to go down to the boroughs, to go down, if you would please, where the squatters are, to go out into the villages up in the mountains and uh, be able to preach, and, and doing the same thing in Cambodia, doing the same thing in, uh, you know, Nigeria, and, 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 you know, just different places I've been, where you go and, and you preach and you give them that gospel and you watch the hunger of people. And those missionaries that go, here's what happens. They live among them. And every day, they get to go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, that is worthy of our partnership. And that's what the missions conference is all about. It's about seeing people get the gospel. It's about a life that's changed forever. It's about a family that's changed forever. It's about them now having eternal salvation. It's about their eternal destiny changed forever. Religion cannot do that. Politics will not do that. Jesus Christ will do that. And so it's important that we understand the concept of missions. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, please. Nobody looking around for just a moment, please. 
Maybe you're here today and you know not Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're here today and you say, Pastor Wells, I, I do. I want you to pray for me. I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. And I want you to pray for me. I sit here today in a Baptist church, and yet as I sit here in my heart, I am not certain that if I took my last breath, my next breath would be in heaven. I'm not certain about that, but I would really like to be certain. Please pray for me. Here's my hand. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Pastor, please pray for me. I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I'd like to know that. I'm not sure about it, but I'd like to know that. Please pray for me. Here's my hand. Would you raise your hand? Just raise your hand so I can see it. Here it is this morning. Pastor Wells, I want you to pray for me. I'm going to pray as to what God would have in my life. Thank you. Right over here. I see your hand, dear friend. Thank you. I see that. Maybe somebody else, Pastor, please pray for me. I'm not sure I'm going to go to heaven. I'd like to know it. I don't want to leave you out. He just raised his hand. Well, God bless you over here, too. Pastor Wells, please pray for me. I'm not sure I'm going to go to heaven. <laughs> don't leave me out. Please pray for me also. Anybody else like that? I don't want to leave you out. Honestly, I don't. Good. All right, good. Saw that. Thank you. Here's my next question. Preacher, I want you to pray for me because I want to do my part and I'm going to pray earnestly what God would have me to do in supporting missions around the world during this missions conference, during this special emphasis days that we have. And I want you to pray. I want you to pray. I've never considered, I've never done, or maybe you have done, you backed off, or maybe it's something that you want to add to. But preach, I just want you to pray for me, please, that I will consider what God would have me to do in supporting, whether going or giving financially to a missionary to get the world the gospel. Please pray for me. Here's my hand. Would you raise yours, my friend? Would you do that? Yeah, good. Yeah, mine's too. Let's all stand, please, with heads bowed and eyes closed. Father, you've seen the hands, and I appreciate the young people that raise their hand, not sure they're going to go to heaven. And God, in just a minute, we're going to have an invitation. Doing that invitation, I pray that these that raise their hand would come and allow us to take a Bible and show them their need of receiving Christ. Lord, I pray for these that raise their hand, wanting to be able to discern the will of God for their lives, whether in going or whether in giving, so that somebody around the world would have an opportunity, like we so freely have here in America, to hear the gospel, receive Christ. Father, may it be so, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. As they begin to play and sing, maybe God spoke to your heart. Would you come this morning? Maybe you just want to come and pray. That's, that's absolutely awesome. Maybe you want to come and bring a friend that you brought with you today that might not know Christ. You bring them and let us talk to them. Let us take a Bible, show them what the Bible says about receiving Christ. That's important. That's important. God wants everybody to know they're going to go to heaven. What about you? What about you? What about you? God spoke to your heart this morning. There's nobody that cares as much about you as God does care. What about you, my friend? What about you? What about you? So neat how a preacher will preach a general truth and the Holy Spirit gives it personal application. That's how God and the Holy Spirit works together. What about in your life? What about in your life? People being dealt with here about receiving Christ, that's good. Others being dealt with for other things. What about you?
Well, look up here for just a minute, if you will. Tonight, I'll be preaching on our partnership with God. I'm going to go in great detail about how God will bless you if you partner with Him. Jerry Ross is a dear friend. We've had, of course, I, well, I've had opportunity to preach with Brother Ross on many platforms around America and some of these uh, bigger conferences I preach. And he has some books out. These are really good. A Teenager's Guide to Character, Success, and Happiness. Tough choices that will either make you insanely successful or outrageously happy. Sounds like a good read. Okay, here's another one he wrote on A Teenager's Guide to Healthy Relationships, uh, Spiritual Secrets to Building a Satisfying and Successful Relationship. And that's a good book by Jerry Ross. Now, Brother Ross has cancer. You pray for him. And uh, he is under chemo. Uh, therapy a lot and so you pray for him if you will as he has that done but he's got some great books in the bookstore not just those but others as well if you are visiting today I'd like to shake your hand and I'd like to give you a gift if you would allow me to do that if you'll stop out there uh, guest services if you've got any of these doors in the back and just go that way down the hallway you'll see me right there okay it's not far down the hallway please come by and allow me to shake your hand. I've already shaken your hand, perhaps. I'd like to do it again, and, uh, and along with uh, being able to give you a gift. And so please do that. Again, thank you so much for coming. Don't forget, tonight, 6 o'clock, is the service. We'd love to have you come. Then Wednesday night, that's the big kickoff. Big kickoff Wednesday night. You come, you be in your place. That's Wednesday. And uh, you'll get to hear, of course, Dr. Todd Lassner. Good man, good pastor, good friend. You'll enjoy it, and you'll get to meet some missionaries. That'd be, that'd be awesome. That's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 7 o'clock. Sunday, of course, will be the final service, uh, Dr. Bob Smith. And so you come be a part of that Sunday morning, Sunday night, and you'll enjoy hearing these men preach and teach. And so that is, that's going to be great. Well, God bless you. We love you. We'll sing our way out. Hope to see you tonight at 6 o'clock. Let's sing together. We'll sing the chorus next time, son. Fun and time.